Reese, are you at home? Is Reese at home? You're Reese, that's why I was asking. So which one of you three is missing? Logan? Um, Logan. You're Logan? I'm Dutch. So it's Zach? Yes, I'm Zach. You're Zach? I'm Zach. Okay. And Logan's the one missing. All right. Thank you, guys. This is sweet. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think I had that right. <laughs> All right. Logan. Logan. You guys are doing so good. We have almost everybody here. That's awesome. I get here about the same time every day. It's kind of early, but not super early. And there was like one car in the whole place this morning. So I thought maybe everybody else had started working from home, but I think we're still here. We have a test next time. And honestly, today should have been our fall break. So we really should have just jumped right into our exam. So we'll have some extra time for review. So let's do a quick cahoots. Let's see if I can do this right. <laughs> okay, I'm going to tell it to move automatically, so we'll see if it'll let everybody in. It's being slow.
Oh, it took off anyway, so I guess I don't have to worry about it. That's the only problem with telling it to automatically go. Just barely beat seven there. Now, remember, some of our textbooks won't take both those answers, but our cahoots does. <laughs> What is that part? Good job. Remember my personal is PowerPoint saying it's all about the condition, the condition. Keep asking. Oh, how did you hardly tricked anybody that time. Not much movement. Ooh, good job. Good job. Some of these terms they use. Good job, good job. Oh, there was some movement. Say a little bit. Very good. We can do the if part or the else part. So we have two alternatives. Ashton's just blazing here. <laughs> Buzzer war. Find our slope of Usually I see a little bit of hesitation on that one as everybody goes, huh? But you guys were on it. <laughs> Ashton is on a streak here. Huh? You're very good. Nice even split. <laughs> Woo, Tim is climbing high. Last one. Very good. Let's see how you did. Oh, we didn't do the building thing. That must have taken too much. Bandwidth, yay! Sixty-six percent correct, which is really good because I do have some questions in there that are. Wait, what are we doing? 
we're, we're like turning into Pac-Man or something. I'm not sure what. <laughs> yeah, what's going on? You guys are Pac-Man and out. All right. So, anyways, yeah, that one. I try to have some trick questions in the Kahoot. We'd rather not in the real test. This is looking at our textbook at the end of the chapter. It's a chapter questions. And you guys did these a week or so ago, but there are some questions that we didn't really look at. And let's take a few minutes to look at a few of these because we'll see these kind of questions all over the place. Tests, just study guides, anywhere you go. So I have question 44 up here on the screen. Let's take a look at it. It says that evaluate the following expressions using the values for A, B, and C is given. Note that T means true and F means false. So if we look at this one, this could be really confusing to start off. So the first thing I'm gonna do is look at answer number A and try to figure out what they're talking about. So let's see, they say that each of these variables can only be true or false. So the first part of A says A or B. Well, if A is true and B is false, that would still be true, right? Because one of them is true. Oh, and then it goes, or C. Well, C is false, does that matter? No, because A was true. Or D, D is true, but does D, D matter? No. So in this particular answer, we can see that A, the whole answer A is true at the very beginning. And we really can do kind of a trick that the processor uses and just ignore the rest of that because we know already that A is going to be true because it's just all or conditions and we found a true situation right at the very beginning. So think about a processor can save so much CPU time by not re-evaluating all of those other conditions because it can be like, Oh, I see it's already true, so I'm not going to continue on. So we can do that same kind of thing on our own. Now, what about B? With B, we can't because we have all of these and conditions. So with B, we wouldn't be able to stop unless we found something that made it false, right? Because once it's false, there is no way it's going to turn back to true. So as we're evaluating across, if we find something that turns our whole answer false, we know it's false. So if we start here, A is true. So there's still a possibility this one is true. But then we do our first and, and we say A and B. Nope, because B is false. So now we know the entire answer B is false. Does that make sense? We don't have to keep looking at all the rest of them. All right, what about C? Is that true or false? A and B. Is that first half true or false? false? False. So do we need to continue on? Not really. We know the whole thing is false. What about D, A, or B? We still have a true condition with that one then, right? So we, we say A or B then is true. Now, if we look at this logically, we're going to say they mean C or D but there are no parentheses. So it's kind of hard to know for sure how to evaluate this one. So if we go to our rules, just sequential rules of how to evaluate, we just have to evaluate from left to right. So our A or B came out as true. And then if we say true and C, that's gonna turn the whole thing false, isn't it? Now, if we looked at it as though it had parentheses, around the A or B and the C or D, then we would end up with true and true. So we have a really big difference depending on how we evaluate those operators, that order of precedence in that one. That's one reason I don't have that one as one of our questions, huh? Because I could see taking it either way and, and the, the correct answer would be that that is false because there are no parentheses. All right, what about this one down here? See how it's working. When we first look at all of these letters, it can be really, really confusing, but we're just trying to determine what the output will be from our if statement. 
So in 45, just the same kind of thing. We have different variable names. Now our variables are J, K, L, and M. And J and K are both false, and L and M are both true. So let's start out at the very beginning here. Not J. Is that going to come out true or false? We don't even look at any of the rest of it. What have we got there? What is it? True. That's right. Why is that true? Because the knot switches it. So we start out with a false and we put that knot in front of it and it switches it. Confusing? You bet. It is confusing to everybody. So, so it, that's okay that it's confusing. It is. All right. So if we say that we're going to evaluate this with parentheses, let's assume we're going to put parentheses in. So I'm going to put some parentheses. Let's see if this thing will let me draw. They supposedly got a six. Yay. Let's put some parentheses like that. That makes it a little bit more sense for us. And that's a little bit more like what we would probably see in the real world. So now what does our not condition do? We're saying J or K. So that's going to come out true. And so now our not's going to make it false, right? So we're going to get a false for this part. Now, L or M, they're both true. So we're going to get true here. And since we have an N and in the middle, we're going to end up with a false condition. This one, in all of these, honestly, would be really good ones to put in Python. Just to try, you guys, because even though they're pseudocode, you could really easily put J equals false, K equals false in some Python code, and then just put if in this statement and put a print statement afterwards to say it came out true. So always be thinking how you can use the tools that you have available, your programming code, to evaluate some of these questions. Because you don't have to just figure them out all on your own. You can use those tools that you have available to you. Okay, now this one, I am not sure where all I would put parentheses to make it logical. This one, instead of us trying to figure it out, we should look at this one and say, this person should get fired. <laughs> and that's really where I am with it, because I wouldn't want you to spend your time trying to figure out something like that, because it's a terrible, terrible piece of syntax and not something that I would ever want any programmer to reproduce, because that's just, just awful. So let's skip it, because it's terrible. Let's go down to the next one. The next one's a little bit more reasonable. Here, let's say we have some parentheses like that. So the first half where we're saying J and K, how's that going to resolve? False. And then what about the other half, L and M? True. So now we're going to say false or true. So how's the whole thing going to work out? False or true? What do you, where would we go? Because we have or in the middle, and we have one true, we're going to end up with a true condition. So, but I can totally understand seeing it the other way. And again, this awful, awful, I just write through it and say, never, ever do that. OK, my writing will stay there when I scroll. So, so with an or statement like that, it favors the true statements versus false, is that what I'm saying? Yes. Okay. Yeah, and that's kind of a good way to think about it, that the, the, the true kind of has priority. Okay. So if there's a chance of being true, we're going to go for the true path. Okay. So let's look at 46. Get rid of these things here. Okay, so for this one, we have W, X, Y, and Z, and they're all true except for Y. So in our first example, let's say again that we're going to have parentheses around each pair. 
kind of like what we would normally see. So the first half, W or X, is that true? Sure. What about X and Z? True. So what's our final result going to be? True. And X and Z is true. W or X is true. They're both true. Let's go down to 50 here, where we have some numbers. Think about it. Now, doing these kinds of questions, again, can kind of be tedious. So it is important as a developer to try throwing some of these into Python and seeing if you're coming up with the correct answer. You can kind of check yourself. If your Python code doesn't match what you think it is, is it you? Is it the code? Okay, but, but you can try some things. Now, some students, too, will try coding, oh, like if they have um, a calculus class, and there's some formulas in calculus that are not making sense or being really hard to remember. Sometimes coding those formulas will help you to remember how they work or help you really visualize all the steps involved in that formula, because we get a little bit more comfortable with our code, maybe sometimes, than with the calculus. Okay, so let's look at this one. These kinds can be very hard for people also because we're saying we have all these variable names here that are letters, but some of them have values. So A equals three. So everywhere there's A, whoops, now I got off of um, alignment here. I was so happy it was kind of aligned. So everywhere there's an A, I would put a three. And everywhere there's a B, I'll put a two. So I'd have to go through and do this replacement over the whole formula, right? So I'm gonna do my, kind of like what the processor would do, e evaluate all of my variables and put their actual values here in the formula to replace that variable name. Now, as I go through, I'm gonna look at the formula and try to decide what should happen first. Well, where would be a good place to start? Parentheses. Parentheses. And we should start at these parentheses since they're right here at the leftmost. So three plus six is nine. Oh, look, it's way off, sorry. I'm not gonna be able to use it. I was so happy it was working. Let's see. So we'd end up with nine to the power of two. What's nine to the power of two? 81. I'm just going to write that down because the more I try to write, the worse it's going to get. So that first part of our formula, we can resolve that out to 81. Then the second part of our formula, again, we have some parentheses. Within our parentheses, what's going to happen first? Do what? Multiplication. The multiplication. So we'll have 4 times 3, or 12, plus B, or 2. So that'll give us 14. Now we can go ahead and finish the calculation for this side of the if statement. 81 minus 14, what is that, 71, like 67, is that right? I can't think. What is it? 67. I don't do math on the word here. <laughs> okay, so we've got one half of our, our if statement done. Now, the other half, again, we're going to do the same thing. What's the first math that we're going to do? So 3 to the power of 3, what's that going to give us? 9 plus what? 9 plus 10. So 19. What Wouldn't that be 27? Oh, thank you. I told you I can't do math. <laughs> 27 plus 10. Is that right? 
So is our if statement true or false? False. We had to go through all that math to get there because we couldn't tell what was on either side of our conditional operator until we reduced it down. So when you're looking at order of precedence, when we're talking about if statement and logic, we always have a higher precedence for all of our math type statements because math things plus minus multiplication, those things have to be done before we can start looking at greater than, less than, or equal to. So if you look at the order of precedent, when we're looking at if statement, it'll say that it does all the arithmetic expressions first. And that's what they mean, is it evaluates all of the math so that it can do the actual comparisons. So these things can be very ugly and we have the ability to make them simple by putting them into Python or whatever programming language we want so that we can see what the actual answer comes out to be. Let's take a quick look at the practice test. I'm going to bring it up on mine and you probably don't want to because it'll give you different questions. Let me see if I can get to it. So our practice exam and our actual quiz that is Wednesday are only chapter four. Did you say the practice exam is only available on Wednesday? No, the quiz is Wednesday. Quiz. Okay. The practice exam should be available to you now. Now, for Wednesday, guys, is it okay with everybody to do this from home, your quiz? So what I would like for you to do is join the Zoom session at our standard time at 1130, and I'll give you the access code to the quiz. So you'll have to join the Zoom session to get that access code, and then I can count you present. Does the, 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 the camera have to be working or? Are you no, I don't, I'm not gonna make you show me you. Is it okay? Just, I'm just gonna make you connect to get that access code, and then you can disconnect. Is it proper? No. Awesome. So just connect, get the access code, you can disconnect and take your test. Now, in order to make it to where you, you feel like you have the resources that you need, today we're going to spend some time working with your study group to get your notes updated for your exam so that, that you have those resources. So remember, you can refer to your notes, but don't refer to your textbook or your code. And a lot of times people will say, that, just like me, can I go to Python and try the code? No, <laughs> you can't, because that would be making it really, really nice. So we won't do that. Okay, so that's what we're gonna do Wednesday. We're gonna take it from home. You're gonna use your notes, and now we're gonna look at the practice quiz so you realize how important the practice quiz is. So let's take a quick gander at it together here. Question one, my friend who spelled her name this way, was Joanne. Now I know it's actually Joan, but I look at it and I always see Joanne because that's the way my friend spelt it. So however you say it, is Joan less than or equal to Jane? False? Yep, we could do alphabetic order. Don't we have alphabetic order? Don't we sort things that are letters? I know that in the window, where I have to administratively withdraw students who don't attend class, they decided that there was no relevant order to string. So you should see me in my Java class trying to find Matt so-and-so when there's seven Matt, and there's no alphabetical order at all on the screen. So alphabetical order is super important. So let me tell you, especially when you're looking for the right Matt to withdraw. So let's make sure we remember Jane is less than Joan. Now there was one question though that I might have counted a bunch of people wrong on in our um, chapter stuff, but I'm not, I'm, I'm just going to leave it unless anyone calls me on it. All right, next question. This one is weird. Given the following program, choose the line necessary to replace the asterisk 
so that the program segment will ensure that an illegal operation does not occur. Okay, read that again and tell me what you think the right answer is. Yeah. And do you guys see what they're saying there? The way the question is phrased and presented is kind of interesting. So what they're saying is, they put this row of stars here. If, if this row of stars was replaced by a line of code, which line of code should it be? So it's kind of ugly to look at, but that's exactly what they're asking for. What about number three? or sorry, question three, two strings are blank if they contain exactly the same characters in the same order. They're what? Equal. What about number four, 95, whatever that symbol is, 94. False? <laughs> the assignment operator and the comparison operator use the same characters. They both use the equal sign, right? I keep trying to get you to say that. Logical operators are used to create blank conditions from given blank conditions. I hear all sorts of great answers. I just can't hear them all, all enough to type them in. <laughs> what is it? Yell it! Compound and simple. Ah, oh, okay. Now this is not going to grade this for you. It'll be manually graded. So don't worry that your score might come up a little low at first because some of these fill in the blank ones aren't gonna be counted. All right, number seven. Suppose my number is six. Is the following expression true or false? Two times my number minus four is greater than six, and my number less than 10. Two. Looks good. So the first half of our equation my number is six, so we're getting two times six is 12. Minus four is eight. So that first half would be true, and 60 is less than 10. A statement which checks to see if the value of an, the expression on the left side is the same as the value of the expression on the right side is an example of the use of the Is that what they're looking for? Left is the same as the value on the right. Now, on this one, oftentimes people will put like that. Does that make sense too? So the best answer would be equality, but I'll take the two equal signs. A single alternative selection structure always contains an else clause. What's a single alternative? Just one thing. So does it have an else clause? No. The greater than or equal is one of the Sure, that'll work. A test condition is a conditional statement. Oops. A test condition in a conditional statement checks to see if a statement is true or false. True. 
A blank blank is used to summarize the actions of the logical operators. Let's tell you this one. It's that truth table thing where we've got the X, Y, true, false, um, that same kind of organization that we were looking at trying to answer those questions. Number 13, in an if then else selection structure, at least one line of code will always be skipped. I think that's false. Well, if I have an if statement and it has an else clause, I'm either going to run the if statement body or the else statement body. Okay. okay. So, yeah. yeah, they just say it in a weird way. <laughs> it's like CIS tests designed to make it hard for you. Okay, if A equals 9, then square root of A equals 3. True. 15, which of the following is not a type of selection structure? And notice that Canvas has rearranged the answers, but you know all of the above are actually all of the others, so you wouldn't let that bother you, right? So is it that one? Usually they say in a test, if you have an all of the above, you should look at it closely. <laughs> Do you think that's the right one? I do. If x is false and y is false, is this statement not x or not y true or false? What do you think? You're going false? I'm not hearing a lot of response. I hear false. <laughs> true? I think it's true. You think it's true? Okay, let's go true. All right, I'm hearing that one louder then. Okay, 17. Here's the case statement. This case statement is going to look at the response that the user types. If the response is three, what would be displayed? The door to Stephanie Street's open. Exactly. Does everybody see that? So we are looking at response. In the case of the variable response, if the case of it being one, do this. In the case of it being two, or in the case of it being three. So that would be correct. It's going to do the code under the colon. Very good, very good. The order of operations for blank blank is not first, then and, then or. What are those things? That would be what our fill in the blank answer is, is whatever not, and, and, or are. So we know those are our logical operators and they're asking for two words, so that must be what they want. Now the statement set cost equal price plus tax is an example of a comparison statement. Is that true? False. That's an assignment statement, isn't it? A dual alternative selection structure is also known as A or AN blank structure. Yep. And again, it's not going to grade you automatically, so you won't be counted off for, you know, not putting a dash or a hyphen or anything like that. 21, a program that uses menus, instead of requiring the user to memorize commands, is often known as a menu-driven program. True. True, we did that one, didn't we? Now, here's our overtime pay. Watch it really closely, though, because they switch the ifs and stuff on you. 
Given that Jamie worked 50 hours last week and earns $10 an hour, how much did Jamie earn last week before taxes? Is it? I don't know. I'm just You're close. I think it's 550. Now, how's a way that you could figure that out without spending a whole bunch of time doing all the math? Because we're always trying to think of a way to do it quickly. First of all, when we look at the if statement, right away, this very first condition shows me that we're going to be doing the else clause, right? So I can get really quick down to which calculation is the one I need to do to answer the test question. I need this long one, unfortunately. And then as I look at it, if I kind of, if you guys notice, as I explain what's happening in code, oftentimes I'll start at the end and work my way backwards. And we can almost do that with this calculation. We see that at the end, we're going to take the pay rate, which is 10, times 1.5. So that's going to give me, you know, $15 is the rate for overtime. And all of the numbers in here are, are pretty easy to work with. So when I know I have that $15 for overtime, and I know my overtime hours are going to be 10. So right away, I should be able to get that 150. And in the answers, there's only two that have 50. So that could knock me down to those two. And then if I do the 40 times rate, that gives me 400. So I know that I'm at the 550 mark. The best thing to do is to have a piece of scratch paper, which you can always have at any sort of CIS certification test or anything, so that you can write things like this down beside you, so that you can be sure you're getting the right thing. Because any sort of trick that we might try to say, oh, there's going to be a 50 in there or something, could fail us at some point. But if we have a little piece of scratch paper and we just write that formula down, then we've got it and we're good to go. Now, a lot of the rules that I give you guys for taking tests, like I let you use your um, study guide notes, but I don't want you bringing up the calculator to answer this kind of question. There's reasons for that, and the reasons are that a lot of you are going to take certification tests as you move forward through your career. And certification tests are going to show that you have knowledge and required skills in certain areas. So for us, like the CIS 250 class, that the database and, and structured query language, there's a Microsoft certification exam at the end of that class. So instead of taking a final, people take this exam that shows industry qualifications for that topic. Well, when you guys are taking those certification exams, you can't use any calculators or anything like that. But you can have a piece of paper beside you to work out formulas or to just even write down all of the things you remember before you get started. So I want you to start getting in a habit of taking tests that way. And remember, tests in our class, especially, are a really small part of your overall grade because you guys do so many projects. Your projects are what really is the majority of your grade. So these tests are here for you to practice, for you to get over being afraid of tests, for you to get to the point where you're just like, oh, it's another test, I've got that, I did that practice test, I know what's going on here, I'm not gonna let it worry me. Because that's where we need to be. Because these tests, the certification tests, are not that hard when you know the information, but they're super important to show other people that you have the skills. Okay, so I'm back to this one, 550. Defensive programming. It refers to all of these except which one? Which one? Ensuring that there are no compound conditions in selection structures. Sounds right to me. 
All the rest are real. That one's just sort of made up, isn't it? Okay, what about this? The integer 16 has a reciprocal. I'll say true. False, true. I've looked it up. I don't get it. Which of the following will make the given statement false? My age greater than your age. And again, we have an all of the above, so refer to it as an all of the below. We want my age to be greater than There's your Do you wait? They're all false. So we'd have to do the all of the above. Okay, see how we did. So again, don't worry about those. <laughs> You go and correct them if there's like a comma error or something like that? Now, for these, that's a really good question. So I want you to do the practice test to try to know what it's expecting so that we don't have to. But if there's some real silly ones like that that we haven't seen very much on the practice test, because there are some questions that the generator just doesn't seem to choose very often. So always ask. See, I did that one wrong. And I thought I was really confident about that, that that was the right answer. I might add it. <laughs> All the rest that are important look really good. Where's that reciprocal one? Oh, yep, see there, I left out that word then that it wanted. Because I don't want you guys to worry about these fill in the blank questions as though they're actual code. They're not. So we'll get them. I have All a right. class where it's like 30 questions or something and everything is just type out questions. It's not like selection. Everything's fill in the blank. Everything is? Yes, everything. What class is that? Allied Health Nutrition. Oh, no. I that's me. I know. It's proctored. I have a camera in front of my face. It's time. Oh, it's no. Class, so. oh. It's like... Health and nutrition, we're going to make it hard on you. Somehow. Yeah, seriously. My mom's like, oh, health nutrition is the easiest class. I'm like, okay. And then I take it. I'm like, oh, my God. Oh, it's, yeah. it's like, what's a carbohydrate? Actually, at Missouri State, when I took it, it was really hard because I had the guy who wrote the textbook oh, that we had. Uh, and so he was real particular about uh, questions. He uh, <laughs> wrote it. Uh, uh, he yeah. moved. He left. No, okay, you. you guys, we have time here for you to work with your study group to get your notes up to par. The other thing you could do with your study group is work on the practice exam. Sometimes it helps people a lot to say it out loud like we did. The other thing you could do is tell your study group, I need to, practice, I need to study this at home and head out. So it's totally up to you guys and however you want to do it. Now, your unit two shared collaborative notes i did not create you guys were creating them so however you want to handle those i will see you next monday so don't forget don't come wednesday take your test at home